Good day and welcome to our full demonstration and explanation of upgrading from one M.2 solid state drive to another M.2 solid state drive. And we're going to break this video into four parts. The first part is how to use a Cronus True Image clone disc, which has a free license that ships with most Kingston products. The second part is very short and it's just demonstrating mechanically how to change the SSD on a Dell Inspiron 5477 all-in-one. The third part, and this is the most interesting probably, is why you can't trust new SSDs anymore and has a lot to do with the chip shortage, or so they claim. And four, we're going to benchmark the Kingston NV1 2TB and we're going to compare it to my two-year-old Crucial P1 1TB that you can see here. All right, let's get on with it. We have got a Crucial P1 1TB uh, M.2 SSD in the machine you're looking at right now. And it is wonderful. People bash it because it's running a QLC. And I'm going to put a link in the top right hand corner if you don't understand the difference between QLC and SLC, so on and so forth. It's basically the number of bits that you can squeeze into a cell. But the numbers are great. Now the problem is that disk is full. And so I need to upgrade it. So what I've done is I've gone out and I've sourced an NV1, a two terabyte, Kingston NV1. And on paper, they're roughly the same. The uh, Crucial is the tiny bit faster on writes, but a little bit slower on reads. What you might not be aware of is the bait and switch that drive manufacturers have been using lately. So the Kingston NV1, for instance, they don't actually tell you what's in it. What they tell you is here are your specs. And they've been using the chip shortage as an excuse to promote one thing and sell another. So in particular, the NV1 that was purchased yesterday could be completely different from the one being fat manufactured tomorrow. And the one that was bought three months ago could be completely different to the one in my hands. So I'm gonna go over that very quickly so you understand what's going on here. There are three primary components to most SSDs, the M.2 SSDs, the ones we all have these days. The first is uh, the controller. That's the chip that's usually at the end of it. You can see here, it's the little white guy and a little silvery guy under the sticker, a little silvery guy underneath the sticker there. And that controller can make a huge difference in performance. The next component to worry about are the chips, the, the actual NAND flash, these little, little chips you can see here. That's your long-term actual persistent storage. Then there's something called DRAM. And for those of you who aren't familiar with it, this is temporary RAM. This is really high speed caching memory. And you can see here the Crucial uh, P1 has two gigabit. The new Kingston NV1 doesn't have any DRAM cache. What these M.2 SSD manufacturers are frequently doing is putting out a product like the NV1 with a stated performance spec, but completely changing the three core components, the chip, the DRAM, and the NAND. So you can end up with a very different product than what you think you bought. And the question now is why would companies do that? Well, what they can do is they can put out high speed, high quality components in the first few batches, get reviewers and early adopters to provide glowing comments about the performance and the quality of the product, and then they can just change it. Now, if you think it's limited to Kingston, no, it's a lot of companies are doing this. A lot of people think it should be illegal that a Kingston NV1 2 terabyte is not necessarily a Kingston NV1 2 terabyte. They could be substantially different products with the same name on them. Imagine buying a Cadillac and getting the Chevy. The Chevy will work just fine, but if you paid for the Cadillac, that's annoying. Okay, so what doesn't get talked about in these types of reviews is, well, let's put it this way. People compare, you know, the two terabyte or the one terabyte to another one terabyte, you know, because it's apples to apples. Except most people aren't doing that. Most people are changing from one to another. Like in my case, I ran out of space. I need to put something larger in. So I think that this is a very interesting analysis. I've got 125 gig free plus the 50 gig that I've got unpartitioned. So there's lots of space on here. With these QLC, these quad bit per cell M.2 SSDs, they perform pretty well, right up to about 90% use. Somewhere beyond 90, they slow down to the point of a standard spinning disk. So you really need to make sure you've got 15% free if you're going to do a benchmark. But before you run a benchmark of any sort, including a disk benchmark, you really got to turn off your antivirus. So in my case, I'm just using Defender, so just... To save time, I'm not going to explain Crystal Diskmark other than to say it's a very uh, common freeware disk performance benchmark. I'm going to run it twice. The top line is what should match your package. And I see the package. 
the package uh, that you that you purchased, right? So if it claims, well, for instance, right here, 1350 and 550, where at my crucial P1 is telling me I should get 2000 and 1750. So nowhere near those numbers. I'm gonna run this again with four gig file, file size. Okay, those numbers, uh, especially for the read, are a bit of a surprise. I've run this several times while you weren't looking and found that, nope, these, this is what I'm getting. So that's what it is. To get the software, you simply uh, Google Kingston Acronis and uh, it'll be the first hit. I'll scroll down, I think it's under the video. Yeah, there it is, download Acronis and use the license key that was on the package. So I'm just gonna run through this without taking up your time, but it's going to be a click next install. I will create an account, enter the license key that's on the package. Here is the uh, Kingston NV1 uh, SSD, M.2 as you can see obviously, and it comes with a free copy of a Kronos True Image, which is basically just cloning software. Now the problem with it is, uh, my understanding is, the, instead of having a sticker or a little piece of paper in here that contains the uh, license code, they've actually embedded it uh, underneath here. So we're going to carefully open this up. NV1 2 terabyte. The code is under there. Click activate. So with true image loaded, you're probably going to want to click clone disk. Not the way to do it. I've tried it before. Doesn't work very reliably. In fact, I don't think I've ever actually had it work. It's highly recommended to only do it from a USB stick. So let's ex explain how to do that. Plug a USB stick in. There it is. And click Rescue Media Builder. Click Cronus Bootable Rescue Media. Click on your USB stick. Click Proceed. Now, obviously, to clone my old Crucial P1 to my new Kingston NV1 2 terabyte, I need to have both disks accessible. The P1, the crucial, the old one, the one terabyte is in the system already, so that's happy. So how do you see the second one if you don't have two slots? Well, you can just go buy a kit like this one uh, for, oh, very few dollars. I think it was less than $20. Uh, and we take the, pop the stick in. Um, in theory, I should screw this down. I should put it into this chassis that my little kit came with. Yeah, I'm not gonna do any of that. Uh, so what we do is just plug it in and make sure it's not going to ground out on, on metal if you're going to leave it exposed like this. So in my case, it's sitting on some, you know, fake leather cover. All right, so it's starting to boot. So I will press F12 over and over again, and that's because I have a Dell. In your case, you may want to go into your BIOS and change the boot order. In my case, I'm just going to do it on the fly with F12, and I'll set it to my USB stick. And you can see Cronus True Image. And then click Clone Disk. Now I could just do automatic, but I'll select manual. I need to select my one terabyte Crucial P1 as the source. Destination, Disk 2. And as is, just leaves the partitions the way they are. Proportional stretches them to the appropriate size. Then manual lets you play with it. Now I'm just gonna go back here and we'll just do it using automatic because that's smoother. And my drive is still flashing, which means something's still going on with it. And I'm going to give it another minute to finish up. Well, now it just stopped flashing. And let's see if I can move. Well, I can't even move my mouse. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good uh, sign. All right, well, I'll power it off. So I will press the power button down here. One, two, three, for bye. Now I'm going to take this machine apart and put the new drive in. To be clear, that took about an hour and 10 minutes to complete that uh, Acronis disk clone. And the machine that I was working on is an, uh, an Intel i7 
specifically 5477 all in one. This machine's about eh, three years old, so I guess current generation's a bit of a stretch, but it's not old. All right, so let's change that drive. Undo this screw, undo that screw, screws are out. Tip it forward a bit and lift it up. Boom, and now it's off. Stand is off and now you think, well, how do I get that back off? I don't see anything to unscrew. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Just put your hand at the top and squish that, slide that sucker up. See how it just slides back and forth? There we go. The old two and a half inch disc that it shipped with originally was here before I changed it to an M.2. Screws to pull out, one there, one there, one there, and that one there that I'm playing out right now. And you're gonna wanna have a magnetic tip screwdriver. I think this just lifts up if I search, yeah. Just grab it anywhere and lift it up. There it is. And, shocker, there is my Crucial P1. Now that's super easy to take out. Same screwdriver, just a standard Phillips. Loosen that up, take it out. Now for most of you, this it will just pop up. In my case, it is not because I put a heat sink down below it and it's taped. And there's the Kingston. There's a, a notch uh, that shows you it's an NVMe. So you can only put it in one way so don't, you can't screw it up. Put it in a bit of an angle squidge it down and then put that screw back in there now that screw just so you know that one there shouldn't have any particular tension on it it's just there to stop the uh, unit from sliding out or popping up it doesn't provide any electrical grounding or anything like that it has nothing to do whatsoever with what our core purpose was changing the drive but should always do it when you've got the machine apart. Okay, the power button's right down here in the corner. Let's power it up and see what it does. Well, that looks happy. It took me right back to where I left off. Let's explore the drive. I'm gonna right click and my, my Windows 11 machine and go to disk management. That'll take a second to come up, so let's go to File Manager, see what it looks like. Great, that looks happy. I like to leave some additional space for emergencies, so I'm going to right click on this and shrink this volume. There it is, so I've got a little bit of extra space if I run into trouble, you know, a year from now. Okay, let's dump that and go Let's get Crystal Disk Benchmark. Change this back to one so we do the exact same test in the same order. I'll turn off the antivirus. Okay, so that's a pretty dramatic difference. Uh, on the Crucial P1, I had, uh, I believe it was 1350 and 550 for easy math. This is 1775 and 1750 for uh, read and write respectively. Now keep in mind this top line is almost theoretical. The middle line here is really the one that contains a uh, little more real world usage numbers. Okay, let's run it again with four gig and see how that works with a four gig file. Well, that's still pretty impressive. That's a nice bump over my Crucial P1, plus I've doubled my space. And as I said, what's really surprising with this is that this test is showing on my Kingston NV1 2 terabyte with zero uh, DRAM cache, whereas my Crucial P1 had a pretty substantial two gig of DRAM cache. And as we've explained, the Kingston product has likely substituted parts from the original benchmarks uh, when this was originally spec more than a year ago. So the bottom line is I'm quite happy with the Kingston NV1, two terabyte, and the ease of using the Acronis true image software that the Kingston NV1 shipped with 
which allowed me to easily clone my older Crucial P1. Hey, we'd really appreciate it if you'd give us a thumbs up. It really helps with the Google algorithm, as does subscribe. Very, very helpful. Much appreciated. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section below. We'll get back to you in a few days. Or you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.